Hey, I'm Jesse. Jesus is still risen, okay? He's still resurrected. He's still risen indeed. We don't stop celebrating the resurrection just because Easter morning was on Sunday. This is Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 50. And I'll also give a glance over at the Mark gospel account that's parallel to this. This is Luke 24, verse 50. Then he led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was carried up into heaven. After worshiping him, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple praising God. Parallel to this is Mark chapter 16. Now, earlier this week, we did look at a uh, Mark 16 account that is in, uh, that is that is subject to textual criticism. It's considered a textual variant in that you look at the all the selections of manuscripts and you've got this one selection that's not quite like the others. It's included in enough of the ancient manuscripts to consider it possibly inspired by God, but it's it's contested. Here is the Mark 16 verse 19 verses 19 and 20. These are uh, these are, I believe, the final verses of Mark's gospel, if you consider the final uh, textual variant inspired by God. So the Lord Jesus, after speaking to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the accompanying signs. All right, true statement. Also, part of the justification that's used in teachings like the Church of Christ's belief that baptism were salvific, Go see our previous devotion on this. There's nothing in Mark 16, 16 that says that you have to be baptized in order to be saved. It says whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. True statement, we all believe that. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Nothing in there about having to be baptized. The signs that are also accompanied that are described here are the driving out of demons. That's something we see in the book of Acts. They will speak in new tongues. That's something we see in the book of Acts. They will pick up snakes. That's something we see in the book of Acts. If they should drink anything deadly, it will not harm them. We don't see that in the book of Acts, but I get it. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. We see this also happen throughout the ministry of the apostles. It actually is part of what gets them in hot water with Rome in the first place. They heal a paralyzed man. He goes running around jumping and praising God. So all of these are true of the apostles. Uh, but that textual variant, Mark 16, verses 15 through 18, does not actually serve as the rationale for some of the heretical practices that are throughout churches, such as you have to handle poisonous snakes in order to preach well, you have to uh, speak in tongues in order to be saved. The text does not say that, not even in Mark 16, textual variant, that uh, you, you, you got to, you got to drink poison or something like that. Like none of these, that you have to be baptized in order to be saved. Like none of those things are actually taught in the textual variant in Mark 16. But these final two verses of Mark are parallel with the final verses of Luke. So he sends them out into the vicinity of Bethany and he lifts up his hands and he blesses them. And as he's blessing them, he's carried up into heaven. We see this is overlapping with Acts chapter one, wherein Jesus is carried up into heaven. According to the Acts account, there's also these two angels that are almost kind of making fun of the disciples. I like it when, the, when angels ask obtuse questions. <laughs> Uh, like, hey, why are you looking for the living among the dead? You know, uh, it, it's really, it's genuinely funny to me. They see Jesus ascend. This ascension into heaven is something that's parallel to the nature of Jesus's immaculate conception and miraculous birth. He ascends into heaven. Why don't all believers ascend into heaven? Well, we're already seeing Jesus in a resurrected body. Okay, this is the, I mean, this is the ideal exit strategy if you're already resurrected. You just go back to heaven, right? Uh, the alternative is, what, are you gonna bury a resurrected body? That doesn't make any sense. He's already walked through walls and doors here. This is the resurrected Jesus we're talking about. I mean, he could also just disappear from sight. That's within his power to do. But this, I believe, makes a statement because in the same way that they see him depart, they're gonna see, we're gonna see him return one day. They worship Jesus upon his ascension into heaven. This is, uh, this is something called the Homologia, forgive me if I mispronounce that. I've only ever read that word. I've never heard anybody say it. But homologia is the idea that like they all have the same testimony. They all give the exact same account. They don't give it in a perfectly same way. Hence like this book, this gospel account gives you how John will tell you some events and, and Luke will include other events the other gospel writers didn't include. All of Mark's gospel is found within Matthew's gospel. 
Nonetheless, they give a consistent testimony, a testimony they would hold to until they died. Luke is drawing from Peter's account largely. Uh, he was not one of the 12, but these gospel accounts are all consistent with each other. Moreover, when we can take into consideration the book of Acts, it, it bears witness as well to their experiences and it shows how steadfastly they all held to this testimony. People don't die for a ruse. They don't die for a cover-up. They don't die for a hoax. And these men died brutal deaths. The one who survives, John. And even then they boiled him alive in oil. It's not clear exactly how what happened to John if he came out crispy fried when he went to the book, uh, went to the island of Patmos and was given the book of Revelation, uh, or if he came out unscathed and unharmed. But all the while, they never let go of their gospel testimonies. This is this is also confirmed be, uh, via extra biblical historical sources. They saw Jesus resurrect. They saw him ascend to heaven. There were some doubters according to Matthew 28, verse 17. Even looking at the resurrected Jesus, some of the disciples didn't fully believe, but Jesus enabled them to understand. They watched the ascension, they worshiped Jesus, and they go to the temple. This is where the church started. There were numerous outdoor porticos and rooms available for exactly this purpose. They worship Jesus with great joy. It says, after worshiping him, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and they were continually in the temple praising God. Here at the Redemption Church, we have just officially launched our campaign to raise the funds necessary to build a building. And I already know what's gonna happen when the building is complete. I think that it's gonna be party central day and night for several days on end. I know that we're already praying about it. We already can't wait to be there. Uh, this car shop has served some of those purposes, but man, I feel like one day when our building is complete, we're gonna be just like these guys continually there. I can already smell the food. <laughs> the resurrected Jesus ascended to heaven. And now it is the year that it is because of these events. It wasn't even so much because of the ministry of Jesus. It's because of the ministry of Jesus through his apostles. They are the ones who reached more people than Jesus did actually, numerically speaking. They're the ones who would then spread the gospel throughout the nations, obeying Jesus, doing exactly what he told them to do. They were his witnesses in Jerusalem. And then from Jerusalem, they went out through Judea and Samaria, and then ultimately it reached the ends of the earth, obviously, because here I am on the other side of the earth talking about it. This is why they gave their lives, because they believed what they saw, because it actually happened. He is risen, and he is risen indeed. The disciples devoted their very lives to it. You and I may do likewise. What better news could you possibly share with someone than the one who took upon himself the full cost of our sins is alive today.